In this video, we'll be discussing the structure of an atom. Specifically, what are protons, neutrons, and electrons, and how did that play into the structure of the atom? So let's suppose this circle that I'm going to draw right here is the entire atom. In this middle part right here is this dense structure that we call the nucleus. So the nucleus of an atom is where we find the actual entire mass of the atom. And this nucleus is where we find what we call nucleons. So in the nucleus, we have nucleons. And these nucleons just mean the word encompassing both protons and neutrons. Protons are just particles with positive charge. And neutrons are ones with no charge, neutral charge. So, like we said, this densely packed nucleus is where we find the mass of an entire atom. So if you were to see a periodic table, you may have seen two numbers, like one right here of helium. Um, the number on the top is where we would find our atomic number. And that atomic number is how many protons we have. And then the bottom number where we have here, this number 4.0026, is our mass of our helium, how it's most commonly found in nature. So if we were to write this in standard nuclear notation, it would essentially be our atomic mass on the top, which is the sum of both our protons and neutrons, the number to the left on the bottom would be the number of protons, and then subtracting those two would give us the number on the bottom right, which is the number of neutrons. This is how to write it in standard nuclear notation. So you might be wondering where are electrons and how do protons come into play on naming our element? So with that said, why protons are so important is because the difference of one proton will completely change the element. On this slide here, we have a snapshot of a periodic table. And as you see here, there's elements with five protons and so on and so forth. But the difference of one proton completely can change an element from boron to carbon. But we said earlier that helium is only most commonly found with an atomic number of four. But if changing the proton number will completely change the element, a different helium element just means that there's a different number of neutrons. So this proton number will not change, but this neutron number will. These are known as isotopes. So isotopes, different number of neutrons, same number of protons. If you know anything about the interaction of charges, you would know that things with the like charge, like two positive charges, will want to repel and two particles with opposite charges will be attracted to one another. So what is it that's keeping this nucleus so close together? Because it's only really consisting of positive charges and neutrons, which wouldn't make a difference. So the phenomenon that's keeping this nucleus together is known as the strong force. This strong force only works over very, very small distances, like the distance within an atom. And it's so strong that it's able to overcome the repulsive nature of positive charges and keep those protons so close together. So the nucleus is the core of the atom. And electrons are much lighter than protons or neutrons. So electrons aren't encompassed in the atomic mass. Electrons, instead, just float around in this empty space. So if we were to have something like 
H2. This has no charge, so this means there's an equal amount of protons and electrons. If we were to have something written like copper 2 plus, that means there are two more protons than there are electrons. And if we were to see something like chlorine with a minus charge, that means there's one more electron than there are protons. Remember, the atomic number would just be the electron number as well, um, as long as there are no charges written on top. Atoms are small, but they hold a vast amount of energy in them. Like we said previously, protons are able to stay together due to the strong force. And the strong force is about 30,000 newtons, which is comparable to the weight of a grand piano. So you could imagine if we have the ability to split this atom, it would release an immense amount of heat energy, which we could use to spin turbines. This is the fundamentals on how nuclear reactors work. This ability to possibly split an atom is known as nuclear fission. And we'll delve deeper into the idea of atoms being able to provide us energy in another video.